Hey everyone, G Scotty here. In this series, I try to get an hour of gameplay for every dollar spent on a certain game. So, with that in mind, is Hades worth one dollar an hour? Make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and let's check it out. Imagine, if you will, a simpler time. AKA a time before 2010. I was a young, little, socially awkward baby in a brand new elementary school. My teacher sat all us gremlins around and said, Hey kids, ready to get your minds blown and your lives changed while we read this book? No. Too bad. Percy Jackson in your face! Yeah, my teacher read Percy Jackson to us to understand Greek mythology. Let's just say my DNA was changed forever. I became obsessed with Greek mythology and I studied a whole lot of it in my spare time. It, ki kind of a nightmare. To be honest, these Olympians are really messed up. Shooting lightning? Controlling the seas? The sun. The sun being your chariot? Brother, that is so awesome. Fast forward to August of the year of uh, the big sick and the big sads. I think we can all admit that we were looking for anything to help us feel happy at that point. Nintendo was having an Indie World Direct, and I decided to tune in. I love indie games, so I was excited to see what was coming to Switch. Suddenly, a handsome lad with a sick-looking sword started fighting. A, a, a Bone Hydra? Wait, and he used the powers of Zeus? That music! That art! What was this game? Hades? Man, this game instantly became one of my most anticipated games... well, ever. Just ever. I was really surprised when my wife got me the game for my birthday. It was so sweet of her. Now I just gotta... Um... I just gotta... I gotta... I gotta, uh, beat the game. This is gonna take a while, isn't it? Well, in the meantime, make sure you've hit that bell. I stream the games I review here on YouTube on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8pm EST, so feel free to come by and hang out. I'd love to see you there. Alright, shameless plugging over. Sorry, back to the review. Supergiant Games had previously released the incredible titles of Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre, all of which were commercial and critical successes, so fans had high hopes when their fourth title, Hades, was announced. Then in December of 2018, the indie studio released the game in early access, where they could give people a taste of the game while receiving feedback, in hopes to make the product as best as they could. After a long wait, the game was fully released on September 17th, 2020. The game is a roguelike action RPG with the intent on escaping the Greek underworld as the character Zagreus. Each time you attempt to escape down the ever-shifting corridors, you begin with a weapon like a sword or a spear or gauntlets, etc. As you traverse towards the world outside, you pick up various power-ups after clearing a room of enemies like Darkness, which is the currency for permanent upgrades, Gemstones, which help you buy important items or lovely cosmetics back home, or Boons, which are blessings for the colorful cast of Olympians that give Zagreus a powerful boost in combat, to name just a few things. However, should a run end in disaster, Zagreus dies. Oh wait, no, he's fine. <laughs> Good thing he's immortal, I guess. When you die, you lose all the boons you had on the previous run, but you'll get to keep other items you gained, like your darkness and gemstones. If you want a rush of that godlike power again, well, you'll have to hit the ground running. I think this is a great way to try out different boons and see which ones mesh well with others. It makes each run feel really unique. Different boons give you different powers, like Zeus giving you electrical abilities and the jolt status condition, while someone like Artemis gives you crit chances and Dionysus offers continuous chip damage at a speed decrease to enemies. There are nine Olympians who will help you escape the underworld, and even more will give you power-ups similar to Boons, so be sure to try all kinds of different combinations out. You'll never know when you'll find a perfect combo that just melts the competition. It isn't just the blessings of the Greek pantheons that'll help you in your endeavors. As you befriend the many incredible characters in the underworld, who are all 10 out of 10s by the way, I don't make the rules. You'll get trinkets of friendship that you can take with you on your journeys, and they give you various buffs. One allows you to deal more damage if you're far away from an enemy, another gives you just more health, while others will help you find higher quality boons of certain Olympians more often. And that's just scratching the surface. There's so much variety in this game, it's insane. Each escape attempt never feels like the one before, and it's all thanks to the sheer amount of combos and power-ups you can get, as well as the ever-changing biomes. Now, up to this point of me first playing the game, I never really considered a strong story something that was a focus of roguelikes. However, the story of Hades is really engrossing, and it had me fully committed to all the characters and the overall narrative. 
I won't be talking about the story in detail just yet, but I thought I would mention that briefly. Actually, if you can think of any roguelikes that you liked the story of, let me know in the comments down below, I'd love to look into some of them. Now, if I had to say something negative about the game, well, I do have one note, but it's a bit of a spoiler, so I'll mention it in the hour by hour portion of the video. Just note that it's so minuscule and it happens well past the end of the game, it doesn't impact the characters or the story whatsoever, it's more so a lack of unique dialogue after a certain point of the game. Once again, it's hardly anything to mention, but it is something I want to briefly touch on later in the review. Speaking of later on in the review, uh... The game starts out with our hero, Zagreus, desperately trying to escape the depths of Tartarus. On his journey, he meets the ever-brilliant Athena, who tells him that she, as well as some of the other Olympians, will help Zagreus on his journey to the outside world. Eventually, though, he's promptly beaten back to whence he came, which is the home sweet home of the Temple of Hades. There, sitting at his glorious yet dismal throne, sits the towering Hades, whom we find out is Zagreus' father. Daddy, I, I mean, uh, Hades, voices his disgust and opposition to his escape attempt telling him that escape is futile. No one can get into the underworld lest they die and are escorted by the Stygian boatman Charon himself. So how is Zagreus supposed to get out of it? Ignoring his threats, Zagreus attempts to escape again and again, and as he continues to do so, more of the Olympians offer their aid, and more recurring characters appear and offer aid and counsel to the young god. Folks like the repentant Sisyphus, the doting Eurydice, and the crestfallen Patroclus give him useful consumables, and even the spooky Charon gives him various items, as long as he has the coin for it. However, lest you forget, this is the Underworld. Not every face down in Hell is a friendly one. Hades enlists his army of shades to stop you, and even an unassuming one could make you start all over again. And even if you get past the army of shades, there are some insane bosses waiting to put an end to your ransacking. Bosses like Megara of the Fury Sisters, the remains of the Lernian Hydra, the noble yet brutish Minotaur Asterius, and the pompous Theseus. All of these guys want to stop you, and they sure do give you a run for your money. However, even if he should fall in battle, when Zacharias returns to the Temple of Hades, he's greeted by a lovely cast of characters, like his wise mentor Achilles, the lovable maid Dusa, the goofy sleepy boy Hypnos, and the motherly mysterious Nyx. These characters all cheer him on, but still, in the background is a looming, overworked Hades will stop at nothing to make him feel small, and incapable of seeing his ambitions through to the end. Yet try and try again he will. And it isn't just because of some childish rebellion or anything like that. You see, Zagreus discovered that he had a mother known as Persephone, who was a child of an Olympian. She left the underworld after an, as of right now, unknown event, yet she refused to return to Olympus as well. She was out there, somewhere and Zagreus wanted to find her, and learn why she wanted to leave in the first place. It's a daunting task, and it can feel genuinely impossible at times. Perhaps Hades was right. Maybe there really is no escape. Oh, but you can pet the good boy Cerberus. Oh, you can pet the doggo! 11 out of 10, this game is brilliant, let's go! Eventually, Zagreus finds himself at the very gates of hell. As he walks through, he discovers a world filled with snow, as well as one last opponent in his way, Hades himself. The battle is long and grueling, and honestly, it might take you several attempts, but eventually, you finally best your old man. He falls, and you continue your journey to find your mother. Eventually, you find Persephone in a little garden just beyond the ravenous winter, at first, she's shocked to see someone intrude her humble abode, but when she realizes that Zagreus is her son, she begins to weep. See, the reason why she left in the first place was because she thought that Zagreus had been stillborn, and she became inconsolable. As she explains her situation and her hesitation to return to the underworld, Zagreus begins to fade, but not until he promises that he will return to her once again. Time and time again, the young god reaches the surface, and from his brief visits, we learn that Persephone didn't want to return to Hades only because her disappearance would cause the Olympians to feud with him. Eventually, though, Zagreus convinces her to return to the underworld to be a family once more, and Persephone even concocts a plan to reconcile with the rest of her godly family via a bounteous feast. The Olympians agree to this, 
and everyone seems to be in better spirits. Zagreus has his mother back, and he's even making great strides in mending his relationship with his father, learning more and more that, though Hades isn't perfect, he only wants to help and care for his son. What a happy ending! So now what? Well, now that the dust is settled, what is there left to do? Well, tons, actually. See, I've intentionally left a lot of plot points out of this review, such as Nyx's mysterious parentage and children, Skelly's unknown benefactor, reuniting Achilles and Orpheus with their lost loved ones, just to name a few. You should check them all out yourself, it's well worth the effort. Now for the big plot point though, Zagreus has everything he wanted. Does that mean we're done running amok throughout his father's realms? Well, no actually. See, Hades says that he has a job for Zagreus, and that's to continue his escape attempts to tighten up the underworld security. At first, this can seem like a little bit of a cop-out, but then a pact of punishment blocks your escape, saying that the more punishments you put on yourself, like harder bosses, time limits, and limited power-up options, the more rewards you can get. Not only does this incentivize you to keep escaping, but it also forces you to think of more powerful strategies and combinations. It genuinely makes the game much more fun and replayable. Now, this is where I wanted to mention my one downside to the game. Once again, it isn't that big of a deal, but after you reconcile with the Olympians and complete everyone's side quests, the dialogue from the characters gets a little repetitive and very basic. But even so, that's well after the game has resolved its conflict, and by that point you're not really playing the game for the story, you're more so playing the game to get even better combos and faster escape attempts. Like I said, it's a small insignificant complaint, but I thought I'd just mention it right here. I've gotta be honest, you guys. I've played this game way more than just 25 hours. Oh, what's that, 30? 35? 50 hours? No, it, it's it's more like it's more like over 400 hours. I might need an intervention. I can't help it. This game is so much fun. Every inch of it oozes with love from the people over at Supergiant Games. The art mesmerizing, the story engaging, the combat glorious, the music Absolutely perfect. I'm not a scholar in the ways of music, but what I do know is that Darren Korb is an absolute unit, and this soundtrack of his is, a, is just a straight up banger out of tin. If you're a Greek mythology nut like myself, you're gonna love this game and be floored by all the references. You're, it's gonna be like Leonardo DiCaprio all over again. If you don't know anything about Greek mythology, you're still gonna love this game. And you'll learn a thing or two while you're at it. It's kind of fun. Hades is a masterpiece that can be played over and over again, and you still wouldn't get sick of it. It's been one of my favorite games of all time, and I genuinely doubt anything will be able to knock it down. I cannot recommend this game highly enough. Now all we gotta do is wait for the adventures of Melanoi and Hecate in the sequel. Oh, I'm so excited! So, what is the final verdict? Is Hades worth $1 an hour? Yes, and give me DLC. A massive thank you to all of you who are members of the channel, especially the biggest goat of the month, Dragon Dance 05. If you want to support the channel and gain access to cool perks like exclusive videos, stream VODs, and more, click the join button to learn how. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Bye bye